Hey guys, how you doing? <laughs> this is the straight monk. <laughs> That's me again. Uh, hey, so today I'm still fasting, by the way. So today is day number 13. 13. Um, and I managed to weigh myself today. I'm just about almost 90. So I'm about 91, 91 and a half, let's say. 91 and a half, that's pretty good progress. I think when I started, I was about 100, 100, and 100, let's say 100, 101. So I've lost basically 10 kilos, 10 kilos, yes, in 13 days. It's pretty damn good, pretty damn good, guys. Um, only water, of course. Um, yesterday and, no, this morning, this morning and last night, I actually went to the toilet and I kind of induced a poop, a poop. Not too much came out, but uh, you know, it was more like a, uh, you know, induced poop. So yeah, enema, let's say, let's call it an enema. So it, it brought out a little bit of interior matter, interior matter guys. So yeah, I feel I feel a bit better today. And oh, look at this, eh, guys. Look at this here. There, 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 there. It's really drying up. It's really drying up and getting a lot smaller. This side, it's not really scabbing anymore. There's no, it's not scabbing. It's it's drying. And I'm not sure it's shrinking like this side, but it's uh, definitely not scabbing. So there is some progress there. My memory, let me think of my memory. <laughs> I think my memory is actually a little bit improved, a little bit. But yeah, there's no real uh, truthful prognosis on my memory. And then of course my weight, man. Look at me now, look at me now. Let me sit up here and you guys can see clearly. Uh, yeah, so that's my middle here. Not bad guys, not too bad. It's going rather, rather rapidly. I'm losing weight and uh, yeah, feeling, must say though, over the last few days, I've been feeling quite because I've only been having water. So I've been feeling quite, not really energetic. Let's put it that way. I, I've been spending, I've been spending most of the time here in the room doing a lot of writing, by the way, guys, check out my book, check out my book. It's done. I've done my book. Uh, the one on the Philippines, dating in the Philippines, dating uh, and settling down in the Philippines. I'm really excited about it. At the moment, I'm still just waiting for people to send me $10. <laughs> then I send them the book. I've had, I've had a couple of sales. So but I need to spread the good news. I need to spread the good news much more about my achievement about the book. Very nice book. I will talk about it next time. So guys, uh, as the as the street monk, I want, I want to talk more about Shaolin, Shaolin, uh, and China in general, especially the, I want to talk about something <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> it's the, it's the toilets, the toilets in China. Um, so you guys, when I was in China in the nineties, late nineties, I must say the toilet, the toilet situation in China was really not good pretty damn awful, to be honest. I mean, the public, most most Chinese houses did not have a toilet. The majority of Chinese houses didn't have a toilet. So people had to go to public toilets, okay? Public toilets, uh, you know, are, were, uh, are or were these typical holes in the floor, right? With a very low wall. So if you squat down, the wall would be around about here where your head is, let's say, if you're squatting. So you could turn your head to the left or turn your head to the right and be chatting to the people next to you while you're squatting. 
and having your uh, well and pouring your guts out um this needless needless to say your olfactory uh, senses were overloaded by the smells uh, not very nice not really nice at all but um and there were very few public toilets few and far between guys seriously you know you couldn't believe it i mean i remember one day with the was it yeah my first visit to beijing me and uh, the master of my school in shaolin uh, he brought some of his students there they're going to play in a movie so anyway we walked out and i needed the to you know use the toilet really badly and we walked i'm serious guys for the whole afternoon the whole afternoon and we couldn't find a toilet a public toilet in beijing that was in 1998 probably or 99 maybe um yeah so chinese toilets i mean the first time i came to shaolin I mean, the first day I was at Shaolin, I was there chatting to Yen Zhang, Shi Yen Zhang, the master of the school up in the mountain. And I suddenly, you know, I had the urge to go to go to the toilet. So I said, hey, Tsi Suo, Tsi Suo you know, and where is the toilet? So he's, he, they pointed me around the corner and I went around the corner there and there was a low wall very low wall, well, like maybe, let's say up to here. And then I went inside, there was a a, blo uh, a lock of wood with holes, 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 about 10 holes or, or so. And then this wood, uh, th these holes, sorry, um, went down, uh, a drain the drain ran out at the back and down the hill down the hill there was a you know there was something like there was some stuff growing growing at the back of the toilet so there were uh, rice i guess and maize and whatever you know were growing there so they washed straight down into the lands and well that's where our food came from right so I, I walked in, I was alone because all the other students were training or most of them were training anyway. But so I, so the first thing I saw was this hole and my stomach was just like ready to boom, go, right? So immediately I crouched, I, I got on a piece of wood, crouched down and uh, dropped my pants and boom, I, I just let go of whatever was inside. So when I looked up again and I opened my, you know, and, and start to focus again, I saw a big dog, a big black dog. It looked like a fucking wolf has walked in and he's sitting right, he sat, he sat down right opposite me. And we were almost, you know, eye to eye. You know, he was watching me like this. And I was like, Jesus, what, you know, I didn't realize there was a dog around anyway. So then, uh, sudden, and then suddenly I, I heard some somebody giggling and I looked up and I saw there was right around me, right around the walls, there were some, um, some faces looking over the wall at me, you know, crouching down there in the middle. And these were the students and they were obviously enjoying the spectacle of a foreigner dropping his guts there among them. And then I realized, the other thing I realized was, fuck, there's no toilet paper anywhere to be seen. Not a single scrap. Nothing. And so I was like, ah, what the hell? You know, I was in such a hurry to drop my guts that I forgot to look for the toilet paper. Now, anyway, in hardly any toilet in China, to be honest, no public toilet or you will find toilet paper, right? So you always have to carry your own toilet paper with you. But at this stage, I kind of like, yeah, my mind was just um, gone. So I didn't think about it. So I was kind of like, fuck, uh, this is not good. And then I, I got up 
and put up, pull up my pants and step down from the plank, the dog, the dog jumped straight in and fucking ate my shit, guys. He ate my shit and done. So, so that was incredible. I was like, oh, and I was like, fuck, that was weird. And then I walked out of there. <laughs> that was just before I, uh, well, just an, an hour or so before I tried to find the river to wash myself, as you can imagine, and nearly fell, nearly fell over the edge uh, in the darkness and nearly, and nearly dislocated my, my backbone or something, you know, like, and it wasn't good. So that was that. That was that experience there. My first day at Shaolin. That was part of it. Um, so right over China, you know, guys, there is you can find horrific stories. I mean, uh, my friend down in a valley. Later on, there was a guy, an English guy called David Davy. He studied in a school way down in a valley, and he eventually moved into like a guest house. But like that, had like about five floors. And he got a room there, and um, and he, uh, and anyway, uh, one morning or one night, sorry, one night, I was there with him, and we drank a lot of beer. I fell asleep in his room, woke up in the morning, and I walked out, and there was a group of guys booked into the rooms, all the rooms, all five floors. They were also students. I don't know why the hell they were sleeping there, but anyway, they all walked out to the to the inner court, to the back of the room, there's like a little, well, walkway, inner courtyard. They all, they all pull. There was only one toilet in the whole uh, guest house. It's right down in the ground floor in a corner. I went down there, and then uh, you couldn't use it. I wanted to have a, a shit, and you couldn't use the toilet because there was a woman in there before me, and she had, she was on her monthlies. So the whole place was full of blood and and it was horrific, guys. And uh, and the hole, the hole was right against the wall. So I don't know how the hell you would you could get yourself in there. You know, I have no idea because. So anyway, I just walked out, and then suddenly, I just saw water coming down. All five floors, all the guys came out, start pissing over the. The, uh, well, over the side, into the middle of the courtyard. So it was raining down with pee. So luckily there was a, the, I could jump back and get some shelter, but yeah, so I mean, there's so many stories of, uh, of Chinese toilets, guys. It's unbelievable, unfucking believable. And then in the end, I heard China joined the WTO, World Toilet Organization, and they tried to upgrade. They tried to upgrade their toilets, and I think the the cities the cities actually started to get public toilets that were reasonably you know clean, and it got a hell of a lot better. But of course, the countryside. I mean, the countryside was just awful, awful. One time, while I was while I was at Shaolin, um, one of the Shaolin guys, uh, he actually was going to get married. So we all got into three cars. We were invited as guests of honor. We drove the third day. We got there. I think there's never ever been a foreigner in that village. I mean seriously, the, it took us three well, two nights, and one and another. You know, we get we got there about lunchtime. And I, um, so again, my stomach, guys, your stomach problems in China never ends, never, ever ends. So when I got there, I was looking for a toilet. So I was in the house, you know, where they're preparing the food and stuff. And then I asked, excuse me, you know, Devishi, just what's I know. They said, oh, just out. Out, turn right. And then right there. So I walked out, turned right outside the door and then boom there was the t there was the toilet there was there was no toilet it was just gr pure the the ground the ground the earth and then people were shitting there 
and I guess I picked up the shit and then deposited it into the fields where they grow their food. So, I, and then of course people were following me around because they've never seen a foreigner. So I started walking with a bunch of people following me every step of the way. And I walk and walk and walk and walk and walk and walk, walk out of the town. And then the people are dropping out. The people following me are dropping, they're getting less and less and less. Eventually I was alone and I was out of the town. So there's a tree. I crouched down there and I dropped my load. And then I felt a hell of a lot better. I started walking back to the town from in front of me. From the town, three cars were appearing. The three cars that we came with, they were leaving. And they stopped next to me and they just like, okay, get in. Sunk to huh? I couldn't understand. What the fuck? And then we drove back. <laughs> okay, guys. That's my story of China and the toilets in China. Well, I can tell you more stories, but I don't really want to... Re- uh, well, I do want to regale you guys, but... Yeah, so that's 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 China toilets, guys. That's China toilets. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoy this. Remember, I'm now on day 13 of my fast. I'm trying to push for, oh, I don't know, goodness knows. But I'm down to 91 kilos. Lost 10 kilos now. 10 kilograms, about 22 pounds, I think. And then my book. My book is out, guys. If you guys want to know about the book, inquire. I will give you the information or I'll put the information here at the bottom right now. Okay, guys, at the bottom, there's going to be information. Read that. Send $10 and I send you the book by word. Okay, by word. Okay, guys. Amidofo.